uh, let's start. Uh, today I'm going to start from the chapter one, um, and I will go through the, some of the material in chapter one. Uh, the chapter one of the book is basically laid on the introduction and all the uh, initial concepts you need to know uh, before we uh, actually can start uh, going further into analyzing the uh, circuit. So we will start with that uh, probably today and the next session we go through the chapter one. And then uh, after we will finish the chapter one, it's actually from the next chapter we um, start to uh, start analyzing a circuit uh, itself. Uh, are you going to post like a schedule, kind of what you wanted to do each week? Uh, I will look, will look into that, but uh, let, let's say it that way. It's not that easy to do that because sometimes we can go uh, much faster. Sometimes you may need a question and it's going to be slower than I expected. Uh, but I will look into that. Uh, okay, the very uh, uh, start with uh, basics of the uh, circuits. So what we are talking about the circuit, what uh, actually uh, we are talking about. Um, so. Let's start with very, very simple example. The book starts with very simple example. I'm going to go through that. The very simple example that I can uh, tell you um, is that uh, assume, um, assume the car, the, the car you have, and it has a two uh, uh, headlamp. So you have there. If, if, if the car is off and you want to turn off your uh, headlamps, what's happening? You have two headlamps and basically those two headlamps connected to your battery. And then you have a key in your car, the switch, that you turn it and it uh, causes the, uh, the lights go, uh, you turn on the light. Or you can turn it off, the, uh, the, this, uh, turn it off the same way. So if I want to draw the schematic of the, uh, uh, what are the headlamps of the car would look like is that we have the battery in the car, and we usually show the battery in the circuit with something like that, and with plus and minus. So we have a battery, and that these batteries, we have some wires that connected to your battery. And then we have two headlights, then each of them, I'm gonna show them with the, uh, with this sign, we got to talk about that. So we have two headlights, similar like that. And then we have a key. So this is very simple schematic drawing of our uh, um, car. So these two uh, resistor resistance represent the headlamp, each of them. This is the key that you use inside the car to turn on or tear off, turn off the lights. And this is a battery that those lamps connected to them. So if you want that the, the, for most of the car that we have is, uh, is 12 volt, volt batteries. So you can say so if you go ahead and for example, if you go and replace your car battery, it comes and look at that as to what voltage set. I think all the cars, at least the regular car, has the 12 volt battery. And you see that um, plus and minus sign on almost all the batteries you buy. Either it's going to be the small AA batteries or it's going to be a battery in your car. And then we have the switch and those register that's going to work. So the battery is the one that actually provide the energy in our system. So all the energy comes from here. And then it, for ideal case, these wires, we assume they don't consume any energy. They don't have any resistance. Uh, so no energy is going to be lost in the wires or conductor. Um, if I to uh, 
look at that. So no energy loss in the water. The key, when we, when, when we say the key is open, is like that, it's open. It means that no current goes through because one end to the battery is open. So nothing goes through, nothing can go through. And when we say the, uh, um, the switch is closed, is most of the time we show, we show it like that. So we show it like that. So when we show it's closed, it means that not the current can go through and turn on the light, these two lights in the circuit. Uh, these two lamps are the elements of so one of the elements and that we are going to discuss in depth are the resistance. Um, so the, in general, the lamps are resistance just take the energy from the battery, convert the energy to the heat and that conversion of the energy, the electrical energy to heat in the basic form which uh, produce the light. And so here on the battery, we have the source, the energy, uh, the source of the energy. And here we have where we are actually use those energy in the lamps. So it's the very basics of uh, uh, the circuit. So it's probably the uh, simple circuit that we can have something like that. Um, sometimes uh, at the beginning, later on, you will get used to that. But at the beginning, it might be good that you um, uh, actually uh, compare this to the water system. If you, it, it helps you to understand uh, uh, what's going on. So if I want to draw something like that, but in the water system, it would like that. So I have a battery here that produced the energy into our system. So it's a source of the energy in our system. The same thing if we are talking about the water system, would be, uh, so in water system, it would be a pump. So it's the pump actually pump the water into the uh, uh, water system. We have the same here that a battery is like the pump. It push all the electron or the uh, electric charge into the system. The wire we have here, we can assume it as a uh, uh, pipe. So instead of having the wire, we can assume we have the pipe that the water goes through them. Um, can. So these are the parts that we have. Instead of having the switch, you know that in uh, all the household we have it. Instead of the switch, we have the valve. So we have some valve here that if we open it, so we can open or close the valve to let the water pass through or just stop the water passing through. And then assume we have some kind of, uh, um, I would say, oops. Let's say, assume we have some kind of water turbine that when the water passed through that turbine, it's gonna rotate that turbine and then the energy of the the energy of the water that the pump puts in the water would be consumed by that turbine. So the same thing here. And have another turbine. So we have it's gonna be the similar way that it is working and uh, as I said, so we have the battery that is a source of the energy in our system. We have the pump here is the source of the energy into the system. Then we have the electron or electric charge passing through the wires. We have the water here uh, passing through the uh, uh, pipes. And then we have the wire which is, uh, is a play as a conductor. Here we have the pipe that lets us transfer the water. We have the switch that uh, kill the light or turn on the light. Then we have the valve that we can turn on or turn off the uh, flow into the system. Then here we have the resistance or the lamp that actually use the energy that the battery uh, 
produce. And here we have the, uh, I would say, the turbine that uh, use the energy that the pump uh, put into the system. So you can, uh, it's sometimes it's easy to look at this way just to have some idea of what's going on. Um, not exactly they're gonna be uh, the same uh, all the time. So this is a very simple circuit. The circuits that we are gonna uh, mostly use is throughout this course is going to be um, has, I would say, four elements. So one of the four main elements plus the wire. So the very first element, almost in all the um, circuits that we are going to work with, we have the source of the energy. That's going to be, for example, the battery uh, here, I, I would say, for example, if you have the battery, Sometimes we have, instead of having here, have, uh, we have the, this battery uh, gives us the different voltage. We will talk about that. Sometimes we have the battery that uh, gives us the current that we need instead of the voltage. Anyway, that's one of those, the, the source of the energy. Almost we have in all the uh, circuits we are gonna have. Uh, the other part is the wires, which is, um, basically uh, play as a conductor. As I said, in, throughout this course, we assume the wire does not have any resistance and they're not gonna uh, use any energy. Then the other thing that we, have, we will work with that and we show it always like that, is the resistor or resistance that we will uh, always using this shape to show them. And uh, as I said, the very probably common resistance is the lamp. It just get the energy and because of the resistance, it has to convert the energy to heat and light. So it use the energy. And then uh, I would say there are two other components we would have, and we will work with that. Uh, one of them is capacitance if you show them like this. So you write it. So this is gonna be another color. So it's gonna be capacitance. And then the other one that we're gonna use is the uh, inductance and we use the, we show them like this. It's gonna be, uh, this one is gonna be inductance. So these are mainly what we have in, in, in the throughout the course. These are the elements we are gonna work with. So it's gonna be the battery or the source, I would say, that provide the, so it's the source of our energy. Then we have the resistance. And remember the resistance always using the energy, the source always providing the energy in our system. So we have the source providing energy. We have the resistance that uh, uses the energy. And then we have these two elements, capacitance and inductance, which neither provide energy, neither uh, use the energy. They just store the energy, both of them. Uh, the capacitance uh, store the energy in form of the electrical charge. Uh, we will talk about that uh, in, uh, later. And inductance store the energy in form of the magnetic uh, energy. Uh, so it's the electromagnetic energy. It's, uh, stores and electro charge uh, stores, but both of them only uh, stores energy. They are not either using or producing energy. They, they're not the source of energy. They're not, uh, uh, they are not using the energy. This is the source, so all the energy comes from here. All the energy is gonna loss here in the resistance, and these two only store or release the energy. They, they don't do anything else. 
So this is basically what we are going to go through. And for the very, probably the most part of the, the first part of the course, probably the one third of the course, we only focus on resistance. We go deep into the resistance, see how it works. And then later on, when we have a, uh, when we will go further, we'll start to talk about the other elements um, uh, throughout the probably second half of the course um, to work with them. Um, so, okay. The next thing I'm gonna start to talk about is the electric. Uh, electrical current. So electrical current. Um, before I talk about it, you can mm, think about the electrical current as the water passing through the pipe. When you have the water pass through the pipe, so it will say that how much water it goes through that pipe, or it will say that how much water is going is going to, for example, one gallon of water pass through that pipe every seconds, or one liter of the uh, water pass through that pipe every second. So basically, if you want to show how much water pass through the pipe, you will say the volume of the water passed through the cross section of the pipe in the unit of time. So it's gonna be one gallon of water, two gallons of water, three gallons of water per second. So then you know how much water passed through that uh, pipe. It's the very same thing that we're dealing with the uh, electrical chart. If we want to know how much current we have in the wire, we will say how much electrical charge pass through the wire per unit of time. And this is how we are gonna uh, show it. So the electrical current is gonna show it with the I, is equal to a change in the uh, electrical charge through the time. Or in the simple format, if I want to say simple, how much electrical charge pass through the wire in unit of time. How much uh, uh, electrical charge we have there, like the water. How much volume of water goes through the uh, pipe per volume, per uh, unit of uh, time. How much electrical charge pass through the wire in unit of time. How much uh, uh, electrical charge we have there, like the water. How much volume of water goes through the uh, pipe Per volume per uh, unit of uh, time. That symbol's a Q, right? Yeah, that's the Q. Sorry. Q and that's the time. So Q represents the electrical charge we have uh, and is in, in the uh, columns and they show it with the, the units of that is colon and you show it with the C. And this is the mm, time that is going to be in seconds. And the unit of the I uh, is, is going to be colon per second, but they never show it like that. They just show it as uh, ampere. Let me make sure I write it like this. So or mostly just they call it amps. So when, when, when they want to uh, use it. So they said, well, what's the um, current that we have uh, in, in our uh, system? Um, also, it has the, I will talk about it a little later, it also has the direction that we will say that the current we have, the electrical current we have, which direction it goes in the wire. Uh, so always when we are analyzing the uh, uh, circuit, not only we need the, uh, the magnitude of that uh, current, also we need to know which direction it goes uh, in the wire. And we will talk about that later. And then if I rearrange this equation, uh, we might not use it at all, but you uh, need to know it. If we arrange this equation, 
the amount of the electrical charge that passed through uh, uh, the wire is going to be it just rearranged and integrated. So it's going to be uh, this one, the I, uh, dt, and it's going to be between t1 or less t0 and t1, and plus the q at the time of t0. In in other words, if we add all the current all the current together, we will get uh, the total um, uh, uh, electrical charge that we have. So let's go back to the water uh, example to see what this equation says. If I said I have two gallons of water pass through the pipe every second, if I want to know how much water I pass through the pipe, in for example assume 10 seconds, what would you do? You just go and say, okay, every second there's a, for example, two gallons, then I have 10 seconds, it's gonna be 20 times 10, sorry, two times 10. So I have in total 20 gallons of water after 10 seconds. This is exactly what this equation said. So there we times the gallon of the water, how much gallon of the water we have, the gallon rate, times time, here the same with times the current times time to get the total of the electrical charge passed through the wire uh, to, uh, when we have it. Again, just the, um, these two equation, uh, we, we are not using them much, but we we'll just need to uh, uh, know them how they work. Um, five, okay. Look at that example. So, if I would go ahead and say that I have an electrical charge passed through a wire, and I know that Q or time uh, is zero for T is, I would say, equal or smaller than zero, or there, then the Q. Uh, is going to be 2 minus 2 to the e to the minus uh, 100, sorry, 100 t. So I have the q would be like that. If I am at the time zero or I have in before that reference time, whatever is our reference time, there is no current in our system. So it's like the switch is open, no current. And then as soon as we close the switch and there is a current in the system, this is gonna be the current we are gonna have. So that's the equation. Now, if you want to know if these are the, uh, car the electrical charge, what's gonna be the electrical current? And we know that, uh, so we, we can say that the I is the Q over DT. And then we know that for well, the I is going to be zero for T less than zero because there's no current and because there's no change in the electric charge. There's nothing changing. It's zero, so it's going to be zero. And then if we calculate the uh, derivative of that, so the derivative of two is gonna be zero, and then here is gonna be negative 100 times by negative two, so it's gonna be, I is gonna be uh, 200 e to the negative 100 t for t here, sorry, for the t larger than zero, so it's, is larger than zero. That's what, what we are gonna get. So if I plot them side by side, I try to plot them if I can. So if this is gonna be the Q over time and <clears throat> 
we have. So the Q is zero before T at before T reached a zero, and then it's two minus these values. So uh, if uh, um, and if you go ahead and draw it with your calculator or use any program language to uh, to draw that, uh, you will see that it's going to be look like something like this. And this point is. So eventually, if you look at that, it starts from zero, it increases, 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 and then it changes the stops, and it eventually becomes equal to two. And if it t go to infinity, that q is it become equal to two. Now, if we draw the i to see how the i changes in our system. So that's the T and that's the I. So for T before zero, there is no Q, there is no I. So there's nothing there. Don't need to be worried about that. But after, after we just turn on the switch and it goes, um, start goes, uh, look at here what we have. The I is change of the Q. Is not the Q, is change of the Q. How much Q is changing over time? And as you can look at this equation, here it has the maximum change because it's rapidly increasing, increasing, increasing. And then it change, slow down. It slows down, eventually the change, it doesn't have any change here. So the Q doesn't change anymore here. So it has the highest change here because it increased sharply. But it changes over time, it slow down, it slow down, it slow down, and eventually when it reach in this area, the Q become constant. It's not changing anymore. So we expect to have the largest value of I here because I is just change of the Q. This is the, where we have the largest uh, changes. So we expect to have the largest I here. And then here, because we don't have any changes in the Q, the I is supposed to become zero. And if you go ahead and plot this equation, um, uh, this equation, this is uh, what we are gonna guess. It's gonna be something like that. Starts from here, and then eventually it slowly goes to zero. So by the time that the T here, the Q become constant, the I becomes zero here. And this value is here, if I put zero for the T, if I use zero for the T, this is going to be one, and this value is going to be uh, up to here. It's going to be 200. And you see here, if the T goes to infinity, the, because the, these terms become zero. If T goes to infinity, if T becomes very, very large number, this term becomes zero, and then the I becomes zero. So that's how we have it. So again, why these two equations like that? So here we have the rapid change in the Q. So we have the high value for the current. Then at the end, we have the very cha small change in the Q compared uh, respect to the time. That's why you have the I become almost zero here. So it's a very simple example just to show how these two are related. In most cases, when we are doing in the rest of chapter, we are not worried about this. We just work with the I, and whatever value we have for the I, we will work with that. In most cases, we don't even worry about uh, the, the electrical charge. So in most cases, we don't even worry about uh, the, the electrical charge. So do you have any question? Nope, all good. Okay. The next thing that I want to, say, want to talk about is, is the reference uh, uh, direction. And the thing is that when we start to um, uh, working with the uh, circuit, 
we usually we don't know what's happening in the circuit. So if I show, for example, assume I have a, and uh, this box shows an element. It can be battery, it can be resistance, can be inductance, can be uh, capacitance, so anything. So it's a, assume it's an electrical uh, component in the circuit. So if I have a circuit like that and it goes here, then I have another element here, and then I have another element here, and then one more element here, and assume these are connected to each other. So assume I have a circuit like that and I have four uh, elements in my uh, circuit. So as I said, each of these boxes can be any of any element. When you start to analyzing, one problem that we have is that we don't know which direction are the current going. So we don't know if the uh, I in the system, if you have an I, is the I is going this direction or the I going the other way, so that direction. We, we, we don't know that. We don't know this one is correct or this one is correct. The way that we are gonna do that in most cases, unless we are certain the direction, we just simply choose one direction. Just choose a direction, don't be worried about it. And assume, for example, say it's going this direction, then it's going this direction and the R going that direction, and assume all the R going this direction. So just choose and name it as you want, I one, the I two, the I three, and basically I will show that that's gonna be, this one's gonna be I two and this one's gonna be I one again. Again, assume it's gonna be look like this, just name them and choose the direction and don't be, don't be worried about the direction there. If you do the calculation and the, uh, the I comes out positive, it means that the direction you chose is correct. If you do the calculation and then I comes out negative, it means the direction you chose was wrong. It's the opposite of the correct, the, the, the right direction. So if I calculate I1 and I1 become, for example, negative two amp, it means that the direction I chose here is wrong. The, actually the, I goes the other way and not the way I chose it. But whenever you're doing it, unless you're certain about the direction, don't spend time to try figure out which direction those eyes goes. Just whatever you think, whatever you feel it goes, just choose it. Just choose a direction um, and then do the analysis. If, if the direction you chose is wrong, uh, that the I would comes out uh, negative. Any question? The next things that uh, you might um, hear them a lot is the direct, direct uh, current and um, alternative current, alternating current, which is simple, they known as DC for the direct current and AC for the alternative current. Um, if you go back and um, if you're interested, you can go back and read the history and there was a big fight between um, uh, Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla. And the Thomas Edison was all supporting that the direct current is the way that we have to go. And then Nikola Tesla was who supporting the alternative current and says, no, that's the one uh, we have to go uh, uh, through that. Uh, it turned out uh, after, after uh, unfortunately, I would say that Nikola Tesla was uh, passed away, probably very poor, um, young, unknown. But after that, it was proven that it was actually the Tesla was right about that the alternative current is the 
one we have to use and the Thomas Edison was wrong um, in that story. And, and as, as, the, as the history suggests that the Thomas Edison was, did a lot to actually disprove the uh, Tesla, but eventually over the time, um, it was proven that the Tesla was right. Uh, so what are, what are the difference between the direct current and alternating current? Uh, the direct current is when we are uh, talking about the direct current, it means that the direction of the current is not changing with time. So if I have the I and the time, so if it's the time and this is the I, the I basically is going to be a state constant. So it's gonna be like that. This is the DC. So they call it the DC or direct current. So the change of the, uh, the direction of the I is always constant. The I, for example, here is always, uh, you will say is positive. So it's not changing its direction uh, over the time. The time change is gonna be two. Or assume it's gonna be, for example, negative two. So it's not changing, it's gonna be constant. But for the alternative one, uh, the, ch the direction of the current actually change. So if this is the I and this is the T, the time. So the direction of the current is changing like that. So it's going positives, negative, positive, negative, and so on. So it, it changes, it becomes positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and it's uh, gonna change also. This, this call it the uh, alternative, uh, alternating current, an AC. So DC is, an uh, example of the DC is whatever is working with battery, the battery is DC. Whatever we have is working with batteries, working with DC current, like for example, your cell phones or the, uh, the battery in the car, uh, or whatever you have, uh, flashlight. Anything that works with the battery using a DC current, and you uh, use that. Almost every other thing is working with the AC current. So the, the, the electricity we use for any household um, appliances, for example, the TV, the lights, the refrigerator, anything that we have in the home uh, using the uh, alternative uh, current uh, format. So these are the two. Remember one, one thing that uh, usually the alternative current is, is look like, and when they show it, it's going to uh, show them as a, a sinusoidal wave. It's going to be a sine wave or cosine wave. Uh, so it's going to be sinusoidal wave something like that, but uh, it doesn't need essentially be to sinusoidal to be uh, and uh, AC. So for example, if I have um, these or I have these, so I, it's gonna be I, and it's gonna be time, time. If, if the current I have is going like that, it still is alternating because it's changing its direction. It's going positive, negative, positive, negative. If it goes like this, still it's alternating because it's going positive, negative, positive, negative. So it's also these two are gonna be AC. So any time that you have it goes positive, negative, positive, negative, regardless of what shape it has, it's gonna be all, it's, it's alternating format. Otherwise, if it's always a stay on one side, it doesn't change, it's, uh, it's not changing this positive, negative sign, it's gonna be the DC or direct current. Um, for the first part of the course, we will probably for the first four chapter, I would say, we will focus on the DC uh, to get the concept and see what's happening and, and learn how to start analyzing because um, it's easier to do that. 
uh, when uh, you have one less uh, variable to be worried about, and so the i is constant, you don't need to be worried about the i changing. And then through probably the last two chapters of the uh, book, we will go through the AC current and see whatever we learn for the DC, how we can apply them for the AC when actually we have the um, uh, alternative uh, current uh, in, in the system. Uh, so probably the majority of time we are spend lots of time to learn how the DC current works with the resistance. That's probably the most of the time we are going to spend in this class. We use the DC current and resistance and we try to understand how to analyze uh, the circuit that is working with the resistance and DC current. So before I go through the, uh, the next one, the voltage, the, the very last thing, again, we are not using it much in the, this class, but it is in the book, I'm gonna mention it. Uh, sometimes for the direction of the, uh, the, the current, if you have like that and assume I have an element like that, um, and we have the, this end is A, this end is B, if they put the A, A, B, means the current goes from A to B. So it means the current that we have is like that. So it's gonna be A, A, B. So sometimes they show it like that. No, we, we don't use it, but know that when it says A, A, B, it means that the direction is from, the direction of the current is from point A to point B, of end A to end B. Uh, uh, the, the, just remember that. Um, so this is the mm, current and mm, so what's the current? So we talk about the current and direction and then the uh, AC and DC. The next, uh, uh, so let, let me uh, review it very quickly again what we did. So at the very first, stop we look at the circuits and the elements so we have we said that we have a circuit has the elements of the uh, it can be sources it can be resistance can be inductance can be capacitance capacitance and they are wired to connect them then we talk about the current in the in the uh, in the circuit so the current is actually the electrical charge passing through the systems like the water passing through the uh, pipe. So what's the current passing through the system and we said how we calculate it uh, uh, here. So it's, uh, how we calculate the current, what's the direction of the current, and uh, how the, the, the current change over time. So these are all about the current. The next step would be uh, voltage. Uh, Um, the voltage in the system is, if, if you have, let's, let's go back into the pipe example. If you have a pipe, um, have you ever thought why when you have a pipe, why the water pass, why exactly water go through the pipe? What's the reason that the water, um, uh, goes from point A to the point B of the pipe. When you when you open the valve, what's the reason that you have the water goes through that uh, uh, pipe? Anyone knows why it, why you have the water actually moves in the pipe? What when you pour the water in the jar, why it doesn't move any uh, anymore? It just stay there. If you open the valve, the the, uh, the water comes out of of the tap. And you, for example, as you have a jar or you have a, a, a container, uh, so you fill up your cup and then the water stays there. It's not going any, any, uh, anywhere anymore. Do you know why is the case? It goes up. Talking about uh, energy source. The energy, but what's the, what's the uh, what is that energy? 
converted to that cause the water moves? Pressure. pressure. Yeah. That's the pressure. Yeah. That's the pressure. The pressure differences is cause the water goes from point A to point B. Wherever you have the higher pressure, uh, uh, the water moves from the higher pressure point toward the lower pressure point. And this is exactly what's happening if you have the, um, if you have the uh, uh, circuits. In the circuits, the voltage kind of represents the pressure. The, the voltage difference kind of represents the pressure difference in the pipe that caused the water moves from one point to another point. And the same things that you have, the, the difference, the potential differences that you have in, uh, in the system and that you show it as the voltage, it causes it that the electrical charges moves from one point to another point. So you, when you have the battery and you have the positive and negative pole, it because of uh, the potential difference be, uh, are between these two poles, if you connect them and you don't don't connect them directly because it's gonna uh, it's gonna be dangerous. But if somehow you connect them, all the electron, all the electrical charge is stored in the battery from one end goes to the other end of the battery which is uh, empty and when when you actually recharge the battery you move the electrical charge back to where it was uh, to charge it so this is kind of uh, to know what's the voltage just remember always the pressure it just push the electrical charge out because of the like the pressure push the water into the pipe the voltage in the battery pushed the electrical charge into the wire and uh, uh, caused the uh, uh, water uh, to cause the water to move or here caused the electrical charge to move. Um, for, for, for the battery wire, when, when we have it, remember when we talk about the battery, we always say that uh, we show them with the positive and negative sign. So, when you have a battery, we always show positive and negative, and then we go ahead uh, with what's happening. Just, well, by the one thing, um, if any of you have the physics and they teach you, uh, if you have the physics that they teach you the uh, electrical uh, concepts, whatever we, uh, I'm talking here probably is the opposite of what they uh, uh, use in the physics. Uh, eventually, the, the, the final uh, result is the same. But somehow, the, the engineers uh, um, decided uh, all the mm, direction of the motion or direction of the electric charge is from the positive uh, um, sign, which is wrong, but easier to work with. And the physicists uh, use the, uh, the correct one, which means that the, uh, all the charges go from the negative sign, uh, negative uh, pole, which is the correct, but is probably the hardest to work with. Uh, so engineer, these are the, just the convention. There's no difference between them. It's your, remember that if you have the physics course or you already had it, all the direction we are gonna use here is opposite of the direction we are using in physics. Um, just, just know that. Otherwise, uh, everything is gonna uh, comes out at the end at the same. Yes, exactly. Uh, for me, I myself uh, prefer the way the engineer works it because I prefer to consider the positive is the is the uh, pole that actually uh, cause all the motion, not the negative. What? Anyway, so if you have like that, and then you have some element in the in that. Um, uh, system, uh, we are going to assign the positive. And remember, when, when, whenever we talk about the voltage, we talk about the difference between voltage from the two ends of the element. I will show you what I mean. So if um, I have, the, for example, here, and then I have an element here, and then I have another element here, and then I have here. We have, when, when we are talking about uh, the voltage, we have to go ahead and actually uh, assign the voltage to all those elements. And how we are doing that, we usually will say that, for example, uh, let me show. so we'll say that it's positive, negative, and this is, for example, V1, 
And then, for example, I would go ahead and say this okay, is a positive, is negative, is V2, and go ahead. So the V1 shows the difference between the voltage from two ends. So just uh, remember that the V1 represents the difference between this positive and negative part. So between this end and then the, the other end. This is how the, this voltage actually shows. While we are working with the current, if I says that the current actually shows how much current goes through that element. So the current shows how much element goes through the element and the voltage of that element shows what's the difference uh, so of the voltage between two end of that um, uh, element. So if sometimes I, I telling you the voltage is zero, it doesn't mean there is no electrical current. It means that the voltage between two ends is zero. So the voltage before and after that are just zero. The, the difference between them are zero. It doesn't mean it's not there. It's not that it is zero before and it's zero after. The difference between them is zero. So if I come here and say the V1 is zero, it doesn't mean it is zero here and it is zero here. It means that from here to here, it becomes zero. There is no difference between here and here. It doesn't mean that it is zero here and it is zero here. The difference between before the element and after the element is zero. So remember that. Whenever we talk, when we say the current is zero, it absolutely means zero. It means there is nothing going on. But when we say the the voltage is zero, it means the difference is zero. You you, you will see. Just just wait uh, just wait a little bit. You will see what 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 it shows actually. Um, um, So one more time again. Again, when I said the voltage shows the difference between two ends. So if the voltage is zero, it doesn't mean there is nothing happening there. It just means the difference between them is zero. And then um, the, the current, if the current is zero, it means that actually nothing uh, going on. Uh, let's go back um, to that pressure. When it says the pressure, there's a water, uh, there's a pressure difference in the pipe that actually cause the water moves in the pipe. Uh, that pressure represents the energy difference between two, uh, actually between two ends of the pipe. That that energy difference represented as a pressure and push the water moves. It's the same as the voltage. Um, the voltage is shows how much energy passed through um, uh, the, the element uh, that uh, we have. So in other words, it shows how much, if, if you have the electrical, if you have the electrical charge through, go through the system, it shows how much energy those electrical charge carry with them. Okay, so, um, when, when I says that there is a voltage difference between these two and are zero, it means that no energy goes from here to here. It doesn't mean there is nothing in the system. It just there is no energy going from here to here. So voltage basically shows you how much energy electrical charge um, passing uh, or electrical charge uh, transfer. Uh, when uh, when we work with that, don't worry about that. It might seem a little bit confusing, but just as a simple way of looking at that, look at the, the voltage caused the electrical charge to move. Look at it that way. But if you want the exact definition, is the amount of energy that electrical charge actually uh, uh, moves around. So it's going to be uh, joule per column. So electrical uh, energy that uh, electrical charge uh, transfer. But simple way, just look at it as a uh, as a source that caused the electrical charge moves. 
Um, the same as 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 uh, the same as uh, current that it was the AC or DC, the the voltage can be AC or DC as well. So if I say the voltage is, for example, for the like the battery, if I say the voltage is 10 amp, 10 volt or 12 volt, like the battery of the uh, car, so that's that's gonna be DC. If I said no, the, for example, it's going to be uh, changing with time, so it's going to be 12 cosine, for example, pi t, it's changing with time, then it's going to be DC. So it's going to be AC, it's going to, sorry, it's going to be DC. That's going to be AC. So if it's constant with time, it's DC, it's changing. Uh, it's AC. By the way, as I said, the, the volt is actually, uh, sorry, the, the, the voltage, it's real uh, units is joule per column, it's just energy per energy charge. Joule is the uh, energy at column is the energy charge unit. But usually they just show it with volts. It says, it's, for example, 12 volts instead of uh, saying that it is a uh, uh, joule per column. Yeah, like yeah. a front. It's a pi T. It's uh, a pi and T. Okay. Okay, what's oh, in what? front of the pi? What's what? Cosine. Like at the. Oh, here? Oh, it's cosine. cosine. Okay. It's the cosine of pi, sorry. Okay. So it's a cosine it's okay. of pi. So look at the battery. It's easier. Um, but the, the next thing I want to say that if the if the element using energy or uh, uh, producing energy uh, is a look at the battery. If you have the battery, look at like that. So it's a battery. If the current direction is like this, which is the current direction, goes from negative to the positive, it means that the energy is supplied. And it's the same for the battery, when we have the battery. So you see, you have the battery and then now, if I connect this battery to an element, so here is supplied, and here again I have the positive sign, negative sign, and then here, um, I have the I goes from here to here. Here that we have, um, I call it absorb, absorb, yeah. Always remember this, to remember, to know that if the elements supply the energy or absorb the energy. If the I goes from negative to positive, the I goes from negative to positive, it supplies the energy. That element supplies the energy. If the I goes from the positive to negative, if it goes from the positive to negative, it actually using the energy or absorbing the energy uh, like that. So if I have a battery, it's positive, it's negative. And then I have I going like this through that battery. What is happening here? Can anyone say? Going up, going down, it going from positive to negative in the battery. What's happening here? You're, ch you're charging it. Yeah, charging. so this is how we charge the battery. So we call the battery in this case is actually absorbing the energy. So remember, if it goes from positive to negative, like here, it goes from positive to negative, it's absorbing the energy. If it goes from negative to positive, if I, 
goes from negative to positive, it supply uh, the energy. Remember this. So mm, uh, later on, we will work with them. And don't be worried. I'm, I, uh, I'm going to go through all these basics here just to lay out what's happening. Then we slowly start to use them one by one. So we are not going to use them all uh, at once together. But I'm going to just go over them as the book go as an overview of these uh, uh, concepts. And then by the time we get to them, we'll uh, use them, each of them, uh, uh, one by one. Uh, one other way that the book, again, we are not going to use it, but the book sh um, shows the positive or negative is like that. So if you have the element like that, and if um, the voltage, sometimes the book shows the voltage with like this, or in some kind shows like that. If you have the arrow, the head of the arrow, remember the head of the arrow is always point to the positive. So if you, you are giving like that, it means that it is positive here, negative here, remember. So if you have the arrow on the voltage, the head of the arrow shows the positive. But um, uh, throughout the course, I myself uh, use just positive negative instead of that uh, arrow convention. Uh, but I have to just uh, remember that. Okay, any more question? No, so all good. Then the next one I'm going to discuss is the last uh, um, concept I'll talk about it today. It's going to be the power and energy. The power the power in the circuit is V times I. So in other words, as I will say, the current is the electrical charge you have and the P, the, the, the voltage, it shows how those energy, how the, how much energy each of those electrical current has. So when you times it there, so you're gonna get that. So it's gonna be this one is, uh, the I is ampere. The V is volts. And then the power that you are going to get is going to be watts um, that you will get. Or um, in other words, if I want to, the amp here is actually what um, you know, where we have it was the coulomb per second. The volts is joule per column. And then if you times these two, you are gonna get joules per seconds or watts. We never use any of these. So it says the amp, volts, and watts. And this is probably the first equation you want to remember. We, we later on use that equation um, especially in the last part of the book we use it uh, for calculating in the AC uh, system. So the power in the system is always times um, voltage times current and it's going to be the energy per time. The energy the power is the energy per change of the energy per time and if you uh, want to have the uh, total energy in that, because it's energy per time, if you integrate that over time, it's going to give you the total energy. So W is the energy. So P is in. So this is the current, the voltage, and this is the power. So here is going to be energy 
is equal to you have to integrate the because it's the energy over time you just integrate it over time so you go from c1 or t2 e dt so it's the energy um, well and this is the power and the over time and then if you um, have it so it's going to be the power is joule per seconds or watt and then your energy is going to be just joules um, again to just know that we are not going to use that equation probably this is to, up to here uh, you just remember this equation p equal to vi and this is what we later on uh, used uh, in our calculation. So uh, well, one of the stuff, when you do the calculation, the P, if the P comes out positive, it means that power is absorbed. So for example, if you have a lamp and you said it's, the lamp is 100 watts, it means that it's absorbing the energy at 100 watts. So the, the, it use 100 joules per second. And you say that we have, for example, uh, as, it's not like that, but assume it's like that um, in a simple one. When it is negative, when the power is negative, it means the power is supplied. So when we do the calculation, uh, for example, if you do the calculate the power for the lamp, it will comes out positive. If we calculate the power for the uh, battery, it will comes out negative because the uh, the uh, 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 battery is uh, um, actually supplying the energy. And um, again, as I, I said before, so when when we have the for example the battery positive is negative and then we have the i so the i going in this direction here what we have is p is going to be negative and then if we have an element like that, that it goes from positive to negative. So I goes from positive to negative. Here, then P is gonna be positive. So this part, you, you will see that um, how, how it goes, goes uh, the, uh, the, the energy, uh, it goes from negative to positive. So P is gonna be negative and goes from positive to negative. So P is gonna be positive. For all elements, uh, we would have the same thing. So if you have just elements sitting somewhere here that you don't know exactly what is connected to. So you have the elements like that. And it's positive and it's negative. And you know that the I goes through that element like that. For this element, you know that the P is positive because the I goes from positive to negative. If you have an element and you don't know the rest, you just know you have an element like that. And again, it's positive, it's negative. And then the I goes from negative side to the positive side, then the P would be negative. So uh, this shape helps you to remember these two. Uh, I would remember this shape and it helps you because the battery always uh, sub, uh, supply the energy is negative. The water element you have here using the energy is positive and the same here. So if it goes from the uh, positive to negative is going to be positive like that. And if it goes from negative to positive, it's going to be negative. 
And again, we are not going to use this until probably the chapter five of the book uh, when we start to working with the AC current uh, in that uh, section. And mm -hmm. Yeah, just a quick example. So I want to, the book has this is that, um, just, this says that if we know that V is a function of time and it's gonna be two E to the negative T, um, sorry. If you have this the i, if you have the i is function of time, and it's going to be uh, two e to the negative t amp, and we have the v is a uh, again it says the book says the function of time, but this is not the actual constant. It's Twelve volts. Then how much is going to be the p? Uh, so the P is always V times I, regardless of if they are constant or these are not constant, is DC or AC is always V times uh, I. And then we do that so we will have the 12 times two E to the negative T. So you have 24 E to the T uh, watts. So this is the P. And then if we want the energy, uh, and assume we want the energy. The book says that what's the energy, the equation for the energy. So you have to go from zero to the infinity, but usually you have the limit of your integration. So the energy is going to be zero to infinity, 24 e negative t, dt. Again, said these two limits here because it wants just to solve it uh, parametrically, not getting the value that goes that way. Otherwise, you usually goes from the known time to another known time. You don't go from zero to infinity. And if you uh, solve that integration, uh, you are going to get negative 24 e to the negative t from uh, zero to infinity. And um, uh, do you know that if you, I put the infinity, it's going to become zero because this term, this e to the negative t, if put infinity there, this is going to become zero. And if I put zero here, it's going to be one. So uh, uh, it's basically it's going to become it's around, uh, so it's become twenty four. I want to write it more in detail. So you have negative 24 e to the negative infinity minus negative four, uh, zero, which uh, this part is zero because this becomes zero e to the negative infinity becomes zero. This part is one, oh, sorry. This is one from 24 joule in total. <clears throat> Again, uh, later on we will work with this equation. We need to know this equation, but not much, need to be much worried about this. So what remember that equation and for the very last part i'm going to talk about is the prefix and you probably have the prefix in physics already but i'll go over them again here uh, the, when we are working with uh, 
numbers, you will gonna see that we will end up having the very large number or very, very tiny numbers. And that's uh, for that reason, we use some of the prefix to make them easier to write them or work with them. And so you, you need to know them. Um, so you do the right calculation. Uh, some of the prefix I wanna say that, that you're probably familiar with is the giga. And you know that so you use it a lot with, for example, say the gigabyte in the computer and is showed with the G and it means it's the 10 to the power of nine. So if I say is one gigabyte, it means that it is one times 10 to the power of nine gigabyte. The same for the mega also, we have the mega um, in the computer, we use it a lot. So it's mega as a 10 to the six. Means that if I said it's a one megabyte, it means one times 10 to the six bytes. And then you have the kilo, which is defined by K as the 10 to the three. And you have, for example, when you count the kilogram, how is that we say the kilogram, it means it's the one times 10 to the power of three grams. When I said, for example, the kilograms. Then we have the milli, we use it with M as 10 to the power of negative three. So when you say this is a millimeter, it means that this is one times 10 to the negative three meters, the millimeter that we have. And then we have the micro, shows with the Greek word mu as uh, I'm sure if I'm right, you know, it's a 10 to the negative six. And then we have the nano, so n as a 10 to the negative nine. And there's a pico of femtos at noon, as I think these are enough. Probably the one that we need to, you need to know more is you need this micro, we use this micro a lot, the kilo and the mega, but this micro is remembered. So probably you kilo and mega, you already know them, you don't need to remember them, but the micro, remember the micro is 10 to the negative six. So when, for example, if later on our course says that, for example, it is two, uh, uh, um, assume as a micrometer, you know that it is two times 10 to the negative six meter. So remember that micro that we use it later on. 